welcome everyone to our show, AI News. My name is Ethan. I'll be your host today. Today we have a very special guest, Mike Cargyle. I have a question here. Uh, you were in the military before, right? Yes. You were in the U.S. Uh, Army. Army. Yep. What do you think about the military we have today? Well, I'm sick of how it's being treated. It's being treated like a social experiment. Mm -hmm. The military is there to safeguard the interests of the United States. It is the best military that's ever existed. And we're destroying it by using it as a sort of a, an experiment and sexuality and transgender. And I've been against transgenders in the, the military ever since Obama. Uh, first introduce that concept because as a result a, an individual is at war with themselves mm -hmm. they don't like their own identity they're at war with their sexuality or whatever that is and so they want to become something else so why would you take an individual who is already in a war with themselves and then put them in an actual war where other people's lives depend on them that makes no sense Right, so everything we're doing right now is designed to destroy the effectiveness of the military. And I, I oppose that. Uh, we need a strong military, a strong military that's patriotic. Right now we're teaching uh, things like critical race theory in our military institutions. Yeah. You know, on the battlefield, the soldiers bleed one color. It's red. It doesn't matter your skin color. It depends on the, the flag on your uniform, the nation that you've sworn your allegiance to. That's what matters. And in the heat of a battle, the only thing that matters is that person next to you. Yeah. You don't even think about patriots and families and stuff. You think about surviving yeah. and accomplish the mission that's put forth. So everything that's coming out of the Biden administration right now is to destroy the effectiveness of our military. And then we're putting them in places like Ukraine. It's insanity. We have no business over there doing that. Yeah, and they're, they're spending 40 billion and 20 billion, another 20 billion. Right. For Ukraine, for Ukrainian military. Right. If the U.S. have that money, we'll, we'll beat Russia already. Well, well why, <laughs> why, but why not have it on our southern border? Exactly. You know, Trump wanted, what, 10 billion, something like that? And yeah. that's it, to secure the southern border, which is an actual invasion of the United States. So people want to talk about guns. They want to talk about, you know, weapons and arms and stuff. The greatest example of the Second Amendment being utilized properly mm -hmm. is the United States' <clears throat> response to Ukraine. The yes. people are invaded. What do we do? We give them assault weapons. Do we demand that they go through background checks? No. <laughs> we give them all the ammunition, all the weapons they need. Why? Because they're being invaded. Well, what is happening at our southern border right now? Yeah. We are being invaded. Why can't we have the same rights as the Ukrainians? <laughs> right? Our own government is trying to destroy its, this nation, which tells me this is not our government. This is, if you've ever seen the movies, the Manchurian candidate. Yeah. This is a Manchurian government. Mm -hmm. This is not a government elected by the people. It's not of the people or for the people. What do you think that is? What do you think our own government or the left is trying to destroy our own system? Because this is not our government. This, what you're seeing, is not even a, a conflict of nations. Mm -hmm. The world right now is being run by a small cabal or group of Satan worshiping individuals, or what you would say Luciferians. Mm -hmm. They worship the devil and they are <clears throat> orchestrating global events. They're using nations, they're using China, they're using the United States, they're using Russia, they're using Ukraine, they're using Cuba, they're using everything to ultimately get to a one world government and that's Revelation that it will all culminate in a one world government and we're seeing this being orchestrated right in front of us. If there's any hope, it's only in the Bible because this was predicted and this is what's happening right now. Now, can we stall this process by fighting back? You know, I'm called a nationalist because I love my country. 
-hmm. No, that there will always be nations. There will always be tongues and tribes and nations. So we are, th that is not a bad thing to fight for. But what we don't want, and this is what our founders believed. Remember, when they founded this nation, they just left London or, or England, and they were under a king. All of the authority was centralized around a king. Yeah. So they built a nation that decentralized all of that authority among the states. And what we've seen over the last hun couple hundred years is just like a, a big magnet, Washington, D.C. keeps trying to attract that authority back. Mm -hmm. And we just saw this in the ruling or, or the, the piece of legislation <clears throat> the House just voted on with gay marriage. Yes. Gay marriage, regardless of what anyone thinks of gay marriage, is not a federal issue. The Tenth Amendment is very clear. That's a state issue. So when you see the federal government trying to grab it, just like they did with Roe v. Wade and abortion, it's not a federal issue. Yeah. That ruling was not against abortion. It was to push back on this power grab by the federal government. Mm. Because if you have this small group of individuals dictating your very life, you're a slave. Yeah. You're a slave. And that's really what we're looking at is a new version of slavery. Communism is slavery. It really is. So you have no rights. You're completely dependent on the state. That's slavery. Yeah. Well, my thought about gay marriage is like, I actually want government to be out of the marriage business, like all of it. Mm -hmm. I don't think the government should have the power to decide who can get married and uh, who cannot get married. I think that is a church thing. I think marriage should be a church issue because it is a religious ceremony. It is a religious event. What they're trying to do by gay marriage thing is they're trying to take away church's power of deciding what is, of defining what is marriage. Right. And I think that is the biggest problem. What's wrong with our government is that they kept trying to redefine things than reality. Just like you said in the beginning, they are their own God and they want to make their own rules. And there are some rules that it's not supposed to change. Like one plus one equals two. If you say one plus one equals zero or three, that means you're wrong but they come up with all these excuses and then these professors and doctor they just kept feeding us these lies. What can we do to stop these in our, let's say our education system because it is being the biggest producer of leftist idea, our education system, especially public education. Well, what you just said is the key though. I was told on the campaign trail, math is racist. Uh, okay. <laughs> I actually, yeah. Yeah. Math is racist. And I went, what on earth are you talking about? Yeah. Until you start really thinking about that. And it gets to the heart of the issue. Again, we're run by satanic people. Regardless of how you feel about this, they worship Satan. And all that that implies. Satan's called, you know, the, the father of lies. So we see a prevalence of lies. We see a disregard for the creation of God. Yeah. He made us one man, a man and woman, right? So if you're a satanic worshiper, you want to destroy that. Men can be women. Women can be men. Men can have babies. You know, you want to destroy what God created, the template for yeah. humanity. But what they're really after right now is no truth. There's no such thing as truth. Math is racist. Why? Because it will take you into a place where you're either right or you're wrong. One plus one does equal two. But if I can make you doubt that, that maybe it doesn't equal two, yeah. then I can take your mind to a place where, well, maybe men can have babies. Yeah. There's no such thing as absolute truth or absolute error. Nothing is right and nothing is wrong. That's moral relativism. That is exactly where Satan dwells. It's not in the, the black and white. It's that gray area. And then maybe it's not bad to cheat on your wife. Maybe it's not bad to do these things because it's, nothing's really right and nothing's really wrong. Yeah, just and like that, a serpent in yes. the Garden of Eden. Maybe yes. you won't die. Maybe you will be okay. Maybe you will become smart as God. Always questioning what God said. 
Yeah. That's the, that you're exactly right. It started in the garden. The great question. Did God really say that? Did he really mean that? Yeah. Is that really wrong? And if I can make you question absolute truth, absolutely, then you'll question anything. Yeah. And I think what they want to do with the transgender agenda is because gender is really absolute. Yes. Like age, 50,000 years later, your bones right there. And then they can kind of determine your age, kind of determine how tall you are, and then what kind of race you are. But they are very specific about your gender. So that's a man's bone, that's a uh, woman's bone. Right. There's no question about it. Right. If they can twist that, gender ideology, they can twist everything. Everything. So that's why I think they are attacking gender this hard. Well, and I think it's even deeper because you look in the garden, we're back there, Satan was really targeting Eve. Yes. It's, there's been a war against women uh -huh. since the very beginning. And this whole transgender thing is the destruction of women. Yes. If you can, so you had women's rights. I'm fighting for women's rights, all this for the last half century. And then I go, no, you know what? You don't have any rights against the transgender male. Like the transgender male is the ultimate woman. Yeah. I've destroyed women. Yeah. I've destroyed everything they fought for, and I've reduced the role of women literally to their sexual organs. That's all a woman is, it, according to the leftists and according to their ideology, ideology with women. They're not precious. They're not to be protected. They're just there for their sex. This is everything we've, ever t we've talked about, wrapped up. In yeah. this whole movement, you want to reduce the role of a woman to simply being a, the, the, the recipient of the sexual appetite of the transgender male. Yeah. It's evil. They want to make woman as a costume. Yes. They can just put it on. Anybody can be a woman. And I can't believe women are fighting for it. I see a lot of online clips. There are women go like, hey, anyone can be a woman. As long as I identify as a woman, I could be a woman. That, that is the stupidest thing. Like you look, look at all these drag queen show. Right. They are yeah. mocking women. Yes. They're like, that is who you are. That is what a yeah. woman is like. In their mind, that's how they see women. Simply sexual beings. Mm. They have no value or identity outside that. You're exactly right. That's exactly what the whole, you know, uh, drag queen is personifying. And, and, and we cannot allow this. The men have to step up and protect the role of women today in the society if we want to safeguard them. Yeah. And then, that is uh, our job. Yeah. And I'll say there's a war on boys. They're teaching our boys not to be masculine. Mm -hmm. They're making our boys more feminine. I, I, I might look feminine, but you know, this is, this is just how my mom gave, gave birth to me. <laughs> I can't control this. <laughs> but, you know, in my heart and everything yeah. I do is like a masculine guy. You can ask uh, Felicia right there. No, no. Uh, but yeah, yeah, because in your heart, in your soul, uh, you are a protector. Yes. That's your role. Yes. So if I can make you feminine, if I can make you soft, make mind. yes, make you soft and pliable, then who are you going to protect? Exactly. You, I've, I've destroyed the woman and I've destroyed the women's protector. Yeah. That's satanic. Yeah. When you take out masculinity uh, from men, you don't get good men. You get bad men. Right. And then uh, the best way to have good men is to have good masculinity and then a man that have a goal and know what to do. And I think that is the biggest problem in America. One of the biggest problems in America is men don't know how to be men and we're trying to make our boys more feminine than ever. And it started in the 60s. Yeah. So especially with the black culture, I think the black culture was being primed, being groomed by God to be the spiritual leaders of the United States. Mm -hmm out of slavery, just like Israel. They, they were a nation of priests and all, but they were forged in the fires of Egypt. And I think the black community was, was being molded. Their faith was so rock solid. The preaching and the teaching in the black community was awesome. 
And that's why they were targeted by Satan specifically. And so you, 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 you destroy the woman, you destroy the protector, and that protector's role should be his father, mm -hmm. should be showing him what a man is, teaching him what a man does, the values of being a man. So if I can remove the father, then that young man has no hope of learning what a true man is, what a husband really is. And that's exactly what they did. They used the political system to remove the father from the family. And it's just gone like this ever since. Well, th thank you for like all these great conversation. I, I actually love these conversations. It, it's hard to find someone that can speak their mind like this yeah. about religion and about all these, especially about God and in California too. Because in California, the, the belief system in California, it's not exactly Christian friendly. So No, but don't forget, California just a few years ago passed twice Proposition 8, which uh, defended yeah. the definition of marriage. Yeah, so, yeah. so don't think the whole state is a bunch of lunatics. Now, they're importing lunatics right now. Out of this, you know, I keep, I, my hope is like the story of Joseph. You know, what they meant for evil, God means for good. I think that a lot of the Latino population coming up from our southern border and a lot of the Asian population coming in value family. They value life, and they have a respect for God. Mm. And I think that they think that these people are all going to vote, you know, with these lunatic liberal values, and they're going to do just the opposite. They're going to restore this nation, mm. because that's what attracts them. Yes. Why are you here yeah. if this nation is so bad? Yeah. You're not here because it's falling apart. You're here because it still holds potential, a yeah. promise for a better life. Why would you destroy that? Yeah. That makes no sense. And I think they're waking up, and I think it's terrifying the left. All right. Uh, is there any more information that you want your voters to know about you? Again, my name's Mike Cargyle, mm -hmm. and that's really, when it comes down to voting, you have a ballot in front of you. It has a name. It'll say Mike Cargyle, Independent Businessman, Republican. And I'm running on the Republican ticket because it is the closest to my own values. But I'm at war with both parties. Thank you. I am at war <laughs> with both parties. I would run as an independent, but I would get nothing done in Congress. You have to be on committees. A committee assignments come from the political leaders. So you play the game. So I'm a Republican, but I am a different Republican. There's only a few like me in the nation right now. Indeed. I need me in office. Yes. For my family. And our community needs me because I will support the foundations and the traditions that got us to this place and safeguard it going forward. The best way to say this is I am a Christian and Republican and the conservative and the right-leaning political is more of my value for now. So whatever it is, you have to stay as Christian and then you have to, uh, like all the candidates, mm -hmm. they have to stay as Christian and uh, because that is something that won't change. No. And so I took, because I learned a lesson last cycle, I took, you won't see Republican on my business card. It doesn't say Republican, Democrat. It says pro-God, pro-family, pro-life, pro-jobs, pro-police, and always America first. All right. 99% of the people go, oh, I support that. I go, well, then it really doesn't matter what party I am, does it? Because mm -hmm. those are the values. Yeah. I will take to Washington, D.C., and I don't change. And this is the problem we've had politically. So you've got people that go, oh, you know, if you do this for me, then I'll vote for you. Yeah. And they go, well, what do you want me to do yeah. so that I can get your vote? And I, and I, you know, I pray for wisdom. So I saw that's the problem. You know, I'm not going to go, what do you want me to do? I'm going to tell you who I am. Now you have to decide whether my values align with yours. And if they do, then I'm the best representative of you. Yeah, so this election, make sure you vote by value, not by race, not by anything, by value. What best uh, represents you, family, God, and this country, this great country and freedom? So, life. Uh, indeed. Life. So thank you, Mike. Uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Yeah, in Congress too. <laughs>